We're now going to look at section 24.0. This section allows you to claim interest if you've taken out a loan to buy shares. This section has also been tested in ITC. Okay, so let's talk about it. So the first thing that I want you to understand is when you take out a loan to buy shares, that amount is usually not deductible. Why not? Okay, so let me just give us a simple example. Mr. X um, takes out a loan of 100,000 rands to buy shares in A Limited. A Limited then declares a dividend to Mr. X of uh, let's say 15,000 rands. Okay, um, this loan, interest on the loan, let's just write it here, interest on loan is um, 8,000 rands for the year, let's say. Okay, so Mr. X spends 8,000 rands in interest and he, buy, and he gets a dividend of 15,000. Now, when can you claim, when you, can you claim a deduction? When it is in the production of income. Now, if you receive a dividend of 15, what is in, uh, of 15,000? What do we know about that? Income, the definition of income, remember, is gross income less exempt income. If you receive a dividend of 15,000, that amount will be exempt under Section 10 1K. So what is your income? No. So have you produced income if you get dividends? No. So you cannot claim that 8,000 rands interest. That's a principle that is quite important. You will remember that there was a court case called the Drakensberg Garden Hotel case, which said that you can claim that if you can prove that the reason why the person purchased these shares is for some other reason to produce income. So, for example, if um, you are a company and uh, that sells uh, bread and you purchase the company that make uh, or produces the flour to make the bread. Right, you have to prove that. But that is, that is not because you're not buying it in for the dividends, you buy it for some other reason. Right, that's, I'm just pointing it out to you and reminding you of it. But usually, there's no deduction. Section 24.0, though, allows you to claim the interest. There's 8,000 rands. Allows you to claim that interest. But what is important, there's a couple of things which are important about this. You'll see as we go through it. This is only applicable to companies. Because you need to be a controlling group company after the transaction. Controlling group company means you have to own at least 70% of the shares in the company. So, if a company goes and buys shares in another company, and they are afterwards, they have at least 70% of the shares in that company, then this section could apply to them. This section was invented and introduced because when you go and buy a company, or when you want to take over another company, there's basically two ways of doing it. The one way is to go and buy all of that company's assets. Now, if you go and buy all of that company's assets, you could claim the deduction, the interest deduction on it, on a loan that you used. But if you go and buy the shares, then we have this issue that you can't. So this section was to fix it up so that if you buy the shares, it's treated the same as almost if you bought the assets. So what you'll see now, in this example, what I'm going to do, I'm going to refer to this. We're going to say A Limited takes out a loan from the bank and there will be interest on the loan. A Limited uses this loan to buy shares in X Limited from person B. So X Limited doesn't issue the shares. This section doesn't apply in that case. A Limited will buy it from another person. So from uh, a person who's currently the shareholder. This example is what I'm going to use to explain section 24 in the subsequent slides. So when you see me referring to A limited and X limited and person B, I'm talking about this example. There's also one other situation I'll discuss, 
but we'll get there in a second. Okay, so this is what section 24.0 tells us. This is a definition in section 24.0. What is an acquisition transaction? So you'll see we're going to use this term a little bit later. An acquisition transaction means any transaction in terms of which a company, so that's in my situation that I'm describing, a limited, acquires an equity share in another company, which is X limited, from a person that does not form part of the same group of companies as that company. So that's from person B. So those are the first requirements. So person B and X limited must not form part of the same group of companies. If A and B, A is the more important one, B I'll talk about in a second. A says, if that other company, and when they talk about that other company, they're talking about X Limited. If that other company is an operating company on the date of acquisition, and as a result of which, at the end of the day of that transaction, the company, this is A Limited, is a controlling group company in relation to that other company, that's X Limited, and they form part of the same group of companies. So basically what it says is, it says, A Limited must buy X Limited, but X Limited must be an operating company, and we'll discuss what an operating company is on the next slide, and X Limited, uh, and A Limited must be the controlling group company, a controlling group company is if you have 70% or more of the shares in that company. So A Limited must buy the shares in X Limited. X Limited must be an operating company and A Limited must have 70% or more of the shares. If A Limited is less than that, section doesn't apply. Okay, or situation B. Now again guys, this one is not as important to, and you won't see it as much, but let me explain. We can also have a situation where A Limited buys the shares in X Limited, but X Limited is just a holding company for the shares in Y Limited. Okay, so this company is not an operating company, but Y Limited is an operating company. So it says, so I'm just explaining it here, it's not as important. It says, if that other company, so X Limited, is a controlling group company in relation to a company that is an operating company, so they're talking about Y Limited, on the date of the acquisition. So X Limited must have 70% of the more of the shares in Y Limited. And as a result of which at the end of the day, that company is a controlling group company, so that company they're talking about here is A Limited, is a controlling group company in relation to that other controlling company, X Limited, and they form part of the same group of companies. So again, what they're trying to say here is that A Limited must now also have 70% or more of the shares in X Limited. So what's the difference between A and B? Situation A and B. In situation A, when you buy the company directly, X Limited must be an operating company. But in this situation where X Limited is a holding company, X Limited doesn't have to be an operating company, but Y Limited must be an operating company. So what is an operating company? An operating company is a company where at least 80% of its income is taxable. Right, so they say where at least 80% of the amount received is income. So what is income again? Income is gross income less exempt income. So they say if you do that sum, you take the total amount of income that the company has received. So let's do it like this. Sales, let's say the company received sales of um, 8.1 million rands and it received dividends of 1.9 million rands. Okay, so that's a total of 10 million. This company, what do we know then? How much of that will be exempt? 1.9 million, which is the dividends. So the left of 8.1 million. So this is gross income. This is exempt income. 
So 8.1 million is income. So they say, I must say 8.1 million divided by my total income, which is that 10 million. And that must be 80% or more. In this case, it's 81%. So what they're trying to say is, the company that you are buying must not be making its income. So X limited. If we go, just look at this first example. X limited or Y limited must not be earning more than 20% of the income as exempt income. The receipts, they're talking about the amounts received by our crew to them, must not be more than 20% exempt. So they must have income that's going to be taxed. And the income in paragraph A, so this income, is from a business that is carried on continuously and in the course of which goods or services are provided. So they're saying, again, if I take it back to this, X limited or Y limited must be a company that has at least 80% of the amounts that it receives or what is accrued to it is taxable and it must be carrying on business continuously and they must either give provide goods or services. So they're trying to tell you that X limited and Y limited must be proper companies that are operating and trading, selling goods, providing services. They don't want a company that's dormant and then maybe once in a while it sells one of its assets off or anything like that. They don't want that. So if you meet all of these requirements, we can now look at section 2402, which tells us how to claim the interest. So, section 2402 says, subject to subsection 3, so that's section 2403 I refer to. Please, you will see, I mention it here. Okay, but... Where, during any year of assessment, any interest is incurred by a company, this company I'm talking about here is A-Limited, so any interest that A-Limited incurs in respect of a debt, which is used for the purposes of financing the acquisition in terms of an acquisition transaction, so they're referring to that uh, definition there, of an equity share, so if you bought an equity share, in terms of an acquisition transaction, what is an acquisition transaction again? It's where you're buying an operating company. So, remember an operating company is a company that has 80% or more of its income is taxable. And it carries on business regularly and continuously. So, you buy, you buy the operating share in X Limited. And X Limited is an operating company. And you have 70% or more of the share. So, you're a controlling company. Then... The interest incurred by that company, so A limited, in respect of that debt, must to the extent to which the amount relates to the period uh, during which, okay, I'll talk about it in a second, be deemed to have been so incurred in the production of income. So what are they saying here? Okay, so you'll see, I know I'm skipping this, but I'll talk about that in a second. I'm just going to summarize it so it's easy to read. It says, Where, during any year of assessment, any interest is incurred in respect of a debt which was used to purchase an equity share in a fine and, uh, in an acquisition transaction. That interest must be deemed to have been incurred in the production of income. So in other words, what are they saying? They're saying that the interest that A limited spends can be treated as it was incurred in the production of income. And therefore, you can claim a deduction. Remember my example, when you had this example over here? We said that this doesn't produce income. When you get dividends of 15000 and it's exempt. They're telling you, you can treat it as if that wasn't no. You can treat it as if there was income. So in other words, you can then claim the deduction of the interest. Right, so all I want you to understand is they talk here about um, a qualifying interest. Okay.
Okay, so let me explain. So they say, when can you claim this interest? You can claim it during the time that you held the equity share, and if it was used, um, if the share is a qualifying interest. A qualifying interest just means, if you go look at section 2403, that the company that the, sh the share you bought in is an operating company again. So in other words, if I have a share in X Limited, it is a qualifying interest. If that's all it means. That's why I didn't really talk about that there. And they tell you, you can just claim it for the period in which you held the shares. So, what does that mean? So, if A Limited buys... So, let's say A Limited has a, a tax year of 1 Jan to 31 December, right? And A Limited buys X Limited shares using a loan, the interest on the loan is, this is like a 10, or oh, this is like a 12,000 rands for the year, and A Limited holds the share from Jan to August. That would mean that that 12,000 rand interest that you incurred, you'll have to apportion. Jan to August is 8 months, so you can only get 8 out of 12 of it. Okay, that's all that this section tries to tell you over here. You can only claim the interest while this section is applicable. So it doesn't mean you can now forever and always claim this interest if you've gotten rid of the shares. You can only claim it while you, are, while you have the share. So again, guys, section 24 O says, I'll just take you back. If A Limited buys a code shares in X Limited using a loan, A Limited claim the interest on that loan. If X Limited is an operating company, then A Limited has 70% or more of the shares. That's basically a summary of the section.